I recently made a video on all the native species within my home state of Utah, and while making that video, I noticed that the vast majority of those native species were not sport fish. That made me wonder, where do all these famous sport fish we catch actually originate from? Because there are so many sport fish, I only chose to list some of the more common ones in this video. Each of the following maps is represented with gold and maroon colors, the gold representing the native range and the maroon representing the modern introduced range. Let's begin with some of the bass species. First we have largemouth bass. Largemouth bass is natively found in the Mississippi River and all of its tributaries within eastern United States. So this includes like the Ohio River, the Missouri River to a certain extent, and all those other big rivers that come off of the Mississippi. Smallmouth bass is a similar story to largemouth bass. The main difference between the two is that largemouth bass have a much larger range in the southern states and smallmouth bass is more concentrated in the center of the eastern states coming over into the Midwest. The range of white bass, also known as silver bass, extends in the northeast from Lake Huron and upstate New York all the way down to the northeast corner of Texas and Louisiana. Next we have rainbow trout. Now because there are so many trout species, I decided that I'll probably do an entire video just on the trout ranges if people are interested. As for this video, we'll just deal with the rainbow trout range. So one important thing to take note of with the rainbow trout range is that it technically extends a lot further north than it's shown here. However, this includes the steelhead trout, which is a rainbow trout, but that lives in salt water. So this range shown on this map is just the freshwater rainbow trout. The native range of Arctic grayling is found in the far north. If this map were to extend up higher into northern Canada and Alaska, you'd see that the majority of the Arctic grayling range is up there in the very far north, but there's just one little spot further down in the continental United States as well as another little piece in Michigan. Before I get into the range, I need to explain what a kokanee salmon is. So a kokanee salmon is just a landlocked sockeye salmon. So sockeye salmon have a much larger range extending up into Alaska and even to Russia. But the range that you see on this map here is just the landlocked kokanee salmon that doesn't migrate to the ocean. Walleye has a fairly extensive range throughout the United States, extending from eastern Wyoming all the way up into the northwestern corner of Vermont. There's a large population of introduced walleye extending throughout most of the U.S. Northern pike has a dense population in the Midwest. And while it isn't common to find northern pike in the rest of the U.S., you can find it in many corners of the country. Now let's get into some of the panfish species, beginning with bluegill. Bluegill has a similar range to the bass species, particularly largemouth bass, inhabiting all the major rivers of the eastern United States. A close cousin of the bluegill, the green sunfish, has a very similar range, but it's not found as frequently throughout the rest of the United States in the introduced areas. Black crappie has a range extending from the Midwest all the way down to the southern states. You may have noticed that many of these fish have a similar native range, extending from the Mississippi up into its tributaries. Having more of a unique range from the other panfish species, yellow perch is found from North Dakota all the way to Maine, even down to South Carolina. For more content on fish species and fishing, please subscribe and comment below. As a new channel, any support you can give me is tremendously helpful. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next one.